Online Program, conducted by the Department of Artificial Intelligence and Data Science of Visual Engineering College. The topic for the session is Statistical Analysis Software. I'm extremely honored to invite the session speaker, Mr. Nishant Nalan, Director Practice Head, Life Sciences, ACL Digital. He has a certificate from People Metrics for competency led behavior, event interviewing, and Lean Six Sigma Green Belt certification from MSME Technology Development Center. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation, sir. The session is yours. Thank you, Emma. Uh, Emma Mika. Thank you. I hope you can hear me. Yes, sir. Audible. Okay, thank you. Sir, sir, welcome, sir. Welcome, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks for your um, uh, invitation and thanks for your uh, hospitality and support throughout the process. Um, yeah, let me share the screen. Um, okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. You can confirm me. You can. You see the screen. Sorry, it's visible. Okay. We are going to uh, focus uh, and discuss on SAS. So SAS is uh, a business intelligence tool. What is business intelligence tool, which has the ability to collect data, analyze data, report data, that helps to make some business decisions. Let me uh, come again. So what is business intelligence? You can, uh, if you have a notepad with you, you can draw four box and connect with an arrow. The first box is, is collecting data. Second box is analyzing data. Boxes reporting data, fourth boxes uh, helping uh, for making business decisions. You visualize this four box, you will be able to connect this with research, even what part of research or who have a completed research will be able to connect this very well. So, what do we do in research? Set a hypothesis. So, what is hypothesis? We are claiming something that could happen or could not happen. We are assuming something. For example, today could rain or will not rain. That is where we have the null or the alternative hypothesis. In a research, so that is where statistics plays a key role. Setting a hypothesis. We are setting the uh, designing the statistical methodology. Then um, uh, we are defining uh, um, the data collection methods, defining the analysis methods, and then we report the uh, analysis, analyzed data, and uh, finally we publish the results. If you see this. Uh, the steps that we follow in a research. So, and if you connect with business intelligence, it's the same. And the when you talk about SaaS, uh, predom predominantly um, SaaS was used in uh, agriculture data in the 1970s. And um, in India, we started using uh, majorly uh, SaaS um, in different uh, industry, banking, Retail, um, uh, life sciences, healthcare, and, and um, a few other industries. And when you talk about life sciences, uh, it is about industry which uh, is accountable for discovering uh, drugs or medical devices. And um, and since it is a, the whole process we call as a clinical research. So again, um, that is where we need a uh, yeah, 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 support of a researching tool 
um, and, um, and 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 it is more convincing when we have a statistical uh, analysis researching tool. I mentioned uh, for the industry until 1970, we were more into agriculture um, in different parts of the world. We the data um, we were having is agriculture data, and slowly there were different transformation disruptions happened. A lot of new industries um, rise uh, raised up. When we talk about uh, SaaS. Um, this was founded in 19, uh, uh, this was developed in the 1970s and uh, this, the, the SAS was developed in North Carolina University. That is where uh, the history of SAS is about. I will start with the history of SAS, then uh, about the SAS Institute, section to SAS. There are, there are a few questions we could have, whether it is a database or not, what exactly SAS is, and the terminology we use in SAS, the components of the SAS system, the naming conventions and syntax, and how can we learn and practice SAS. SAS um, is a statistical analysis system or a statistical analysis software. It was developed in the 1970s in North Carolina State University, created by Jim Goodnight, who is still the CEO of this uh, company, and along with North Carolina State University colleagues. In so why uh, university colleagues were involved? Because most of the innovation, what we are having, what we had, happened only in the university labs. And primarily, uh, as I mentioned, it was the agriculture research data. SAS Institute founded in 1970, where we went uh, commercial. Um, about SAS, uh, how it can help uh, research? It, it could be any research. So I am from the life sciences industry, uh, where we primarily um, um, support the pharmaceutical companies or biotech from uh, discovering the molecule um, to uh, the uh, drug. So this life cycle from a um, molecule to a drug is where we are involved. And throughout the process, when wherever data is there, we will have questions and we need a statistical researching tool. So SAS system is an integrated system to perform the below, whatever I have listed in my slide. So one is, we can enter data, drive it, manage it. We can create, uh, do report writing, graphics. So data entry, um, I will connect with the examples of uh, life sciences industry. Um, um, so what we, we have a, a larger group, which primarily takes care of the uh, data services. Which, which is called clinical data services. So within clinical data services, we have a group which focuses on data management. This team will primarily take care of the building the data design, structure, entry, cleaning. So once data is there, it means we have uh, the uh, source data or the, unpro the, the unprocessed data. So we will now have to analyze it. Uh, to analyze it, we need um, specifications. So we create specifications, we analyze it, and then we create reports. So the reports will have the uh, information or the answers that we are looking for. For example, when you talk about a drug discovery, um, like example, Covaxin is having this much percentage of efficacy. Uh, Covishield is having this much percentage of efficacy. So, but having the source data from different source of patients who were who participated in that trial, and we collected it, um, it, we, we built a database, designed it, uh, built it, iterated it, cleaned it, and then we analyzed it 
using statistical methodologies, using statistical methods, using as researching tool, and then we created the reports. So the report would give us the uh, details or the information or the answers. Like this much, this is the percentage, efficacy percentage of this particular drug. So that's, that helps us to uh, publish it um, through some uh, reports. Um, so finally, we are making, we are able to make some uh, sense of the data and make some uh, business decisions. So in addition, um, graphics. So we talk about the graphics. So graphics um, helps us to understand the data. So when you talk about data science, um, the data visualization plays a key role here. So you have a collection of data. Can we build some story around this data? That is where data visualization gets in and helps us to make understand the data better. If we talk about uh, the different um, methods of visualization, there are different types of graphs um, in statistics. And uh, for in general, there are different ways of uh, um, um, displaying uh, graphs. For example, when we watch cricket, the player goes runs in different different parts of the ground, and that is projected through a visualization method called wagon wheel. And there are run rate comparison between the both the teams. But over what was the run scored by team A and what is the run scored by team B. So this comparison through histogram graphs is one way of data visualization. And um, in reality, most of the advanced graphics that we are seeing um, in sports or any anywhere is used or created by SAS. Statistical and mathematics, of course, statistics is the uh, key aspect of this tool. Um, and uh, the business forecasting, decision support, operation research, project management, <coughs> all these are part of the business intelligence, application development. Um, so SAS can develop uh, uh, applications using it. Um, module was developed exclusively for developing applications. So data warehousing um, is a method where you can extract, transform, and load data. Generally, what is a warehouse? It and it can store large amount of data. It is the same thing here. So SAS is the most widely used statistical software package, and it is the most uh, Expensive software as well um, to acquire the uh, license. Yeah, it is one of the most expensive software as well. So in short, SaaS is an integrated product which offers BA solutions. So it, it has a lot of things combined. We have seen like data entry, retrieval management, report writing, graphics, statistical and mathematical anal analysis, business forecasting, operation research, application development, data warehousing. So it's an integrated product that offers business intelligence solutions. More about SaaS, it is user friendly. SaaS programs use English like statements, easy to read and interpret. SAS provides a powerful, easy to use method for understanding data. Its features allows you to access data for use in your applications, no matter where or how the data is stored, or in what format it exists. We talk about uh, analysis in SAS. We have to write programs. We write to we have to write or follow SAS programming syntax, develop some programs. 
these programs very easy to understand easy to interpret and um, yeah, anyone can learn sas anyone can learn or write sas programs it is easy it is one of the easiest programming language i would say though we though we men we call or refer as a programming language but still sas is a ba tool which is have giving this programming capabilities as well when you have data at different parts different uh, places yeah sas can access wherever it is stored it's, it's, it's stored from a third party database on the um, different uh, file um, um, server load in where the data is stored can be accessed and uh, the same applies with the file format as well the data is stored at fixed files or separated csv files excel files it has the capability to access it read it and process it as for you who that is a very important question that we could if you have a collection of data if you have questions about the data then sas is the system for you very simple now the, this uh, i think um, uh, as part of uh, the different researching tools um, assume that um, um, all of you would have heard about sql um, um, and um, so sql is a platform independent language um, so in general we call uh, some of these uh, products as a database products which has the sql capabilities and what is a database in general a place where we store data is database and generally we also call this database as a back end and something called then front end so what is front end front end is a place where the user enter the data example in a bill shop is a representative who enters some data there back end there is a data so it could be with uh, databases semi databases um, <clears throat> because um, when you talk about uh, the view database it should uh, meet um, um, the uh, ef course rule the 12 rules it should meet its uh, these rules so the, the question here is is sas a database what are the common expectations of a database one is variable length compression. so compression is something uh, we use to uh, compress files using zip uh, utilities uh, or uh, tools like uh, winzip winrap etc so can we compress yes so then generation data tables indexing indexing is uh, let's say there are 10000 records is there is there a way to access a particular record in a fast manner so what happens is traditionally um, we started using the file processing system um, file processing system is a notepad um, or a textpad file uh, we had in the 1990s or even in the and yeah, and, and, uh, till 2000, we were using, um, and, and when we started with, with this uh, Windows uh, Notepad or Textpad, so we were using the uh, files uh, where the data is stored. There were no databases at the time. The method where we used to access um, data is in a sequenced manner. It, there were no um, indexing support there. So when uh, there was a uh, shift happened from a file processing to uh, database management system, so we had um, the indexing option. And the shift 
from DBMS to RDBM, RDBMS happen, which is a relational database, and from RDBMS to object-oriented RDBMS, then it happened. So this is the evaluation of the uh, data. Data integrity uh, is very important uh, because, for example, of our industry, uh, life sciences, here we um, have to meet the integrity aspect. Um, uh, like um, when we enter data, we follow a double entry uh, method to ensure uh, that uh, data entered is accurate and correct. Integrity constraints, referential integrity con constraints, audit trials, um, password protection. So can we protect the information or the data that you have entered? So encryption, data use, query tools, the optimization, road level locking for concurrent data access, liability, performance and scalability, data integration, virus and scalability. So encryption is something um, uh, from uh, IT aspect. Um, this is common in um, where most of our laptop data are encrypted uh, in, uh, in the organizations uh, to ensure the data that we have in the system is uh, safe and protected. And data views, so views um, is an object. Um, so when you uh, talk about views, it creates a copy of a table. Um, the same information over from a table and doesn't it doesn't create the actual data stru data structure uh, logically it's just a physical view of a table the query uh, tools optimization um, and so these are all the common expectations of a data dbms or a database management system does um, as meets this what good see so SAS satisfies the common expectation of a DBMS than a DBMS because it, in addition to a database software or a product, it has the data warehousing capabilities, analytical application, helps in creating statistical summaries and reports. And it is offered on numerous platforms when you talk about the operating system. SAS itself uh, offers a multitude of products. So if you can go to the uh, website of this product has um, this uh, the, uh, this technology, um, you should be able to find out different products that offers. SAS provides BI solutions, uh, this programming language as well. It can be seen as a programming language and also help with creating applications using this tool. What does the environment looks like? So, it's a place to write a program. Um, like how we are seeing, um, there is a place called Program Editor, where we, we uh, write the program um, and then we submit it. Um, now, when, how does this program looks like? We will actually see it. In fact, I can log in into SAS and show you how write some basic programs and everyone can get access to SAS because the access to students the academia is free there is a limited um, featured version is available it's called SAS academics so i will give you the link as well um, at the end of this uh, session so getting back to this uh, uh, program editor um, what we C in general is called as an integrated development environment. It means it's a place where I can write a program. There is a support feature. You can compile my program and tell that the program is correct. It can give the, me the desired results. And then there is also a toolbox that has some features to support. Uh, enhanced reporting. So all this um, because an integrated development environment. 
there is a log window here. So this log window is going to give us the performance of our program. Let's say I have submitted a hundred line program. So I can go to the log window and review these hundred lines um, and check performance of the code. So when we talk about the performance of the code, it is uh, about this, my program, the program that I have written as and met syntax of the SAS, um, um, its programming constructs, so whether it has meet the standards of um, SAS program. So all this will be given as a feedback there in the log, errors, warnings, or different notes. Output is a window where we uh, see the results. That is where We uh, could see the published results, and and the source data will be available uh, um, in a folder in, the, in a library window um, that we are seeing on the um, explorer. There is a library that is where inside the library we will have the source data. And then we uh, the program that we prepare or develop helps us to analyze the source data. When I submit this program. That you see course and the data that we get in the report just to make the business decisions the data terminology i think i will go to uh the so better understanding um so data terminology um we are seeing a um, table format here rows and columns and uh, this is uh, comparing how this is referred um, in a product called oracle with sas and sas we are called referring to a statistical uh, names references like variable observation row, rows or observations uh, columns or variables and uh, each and every uh, value there is a data value more than one value we call as a data values so this is a comparison between uh, SAS data set, a table. Table is called here as data set. Data values, the basic unit of information processed by SAS, found at the intersection. Just imagine the Excel sheet. So each cell uh, is where we collect the data value. It is found at the intersection of a row and a column in a table. That's the each recorded measurement. Observations, like rows are observations. Each row in the table is an observation. Variable, each column defines a variable. And this is very uh, important um, that um, there are two portions you can see uh, for a data set. One is the actual uh, values. So what we are seeing here is the data portion. The actual values, the actual uh, data that we have entered or the, or the, the actual result, the results that we have, we have derived. This is a portion called descriptor portion. We call this as a metadata. Um, metadata is the, the data about the data. So this primarily talks about the time um, that the data set was created, number of observation, um, example, to the as an environment, this is where you have to view SAS Academics in Google. Go to this link, uh, SAS On Demand for Academics. So you can, uh, you have to, I maybe I will sign out. Show you this. You have to create an user account. If you are a first time user, you have to um, create it new. So I am here. So one step uh, sign in. The Asia Pacific server, so I can use this.
powerful tool. Uh, I am talking about this. You what I am writing. There, there is a uh, asset table that is created already for some for practice purposes by SAS itself. I am getting this information. This is called the data portion. So these are the actual information that is available in the data set. There is one uh, one, one more thing. There is is the descriptive portion. The descriptor portion gives me the detail about name of the data set, many observation, it's 19, then the member data type, engine type is the version 9, it is um, <coughs> protection. If you are setting up some password for your data set, uh, password protection details enabled, data set type label we can modify data representation encoding details observations labels indexes length if you have deleted some observation even that will be tracked here compressed sorted sorting and ascending or descending that will be refreshed here these are some more uh, technical details uh, about the engine and the host and here is what very important this is the metadata the data set it uh, gives you the uh, variable name, then the uh, type, data type. Data type is either a numeric or character here. In SQL, you will have uh, um, uh, character. There are many character uh, types and uh, um, numeric data types there. All you all uh, your numeric data type will be converted into uh, a new num, and all your character like varchar, varchar two will be converted into a character here. So there are only two data types here. It's length. Getting back to the slide. So what we have seen now is the descriptor portion as well as the data portion of the data set. So the components of SAS system, um, there are two components. So now we are getting into the uh, actual code. We have a source data. We have the questions with us. Like we can call the questions as a specific programming specifications as well. Um, so we have the questions with us. Now we have to write a program. Before writing a program in SAS, we should know exactly what are the different blocks of the program. There are only two blocks. It's a, one of the simplest programming structure we have. One is the data and the other is a proc step. The first step is used to create the SAS data set. Okay. And how can we um, create a, is something we will see um, it's our existing data set. You can either create a new or you can read an existing data set. Is to create or manipulate the SAS data set. You can define the variable and their properties. So when you say that define the variable and its properties is nothing but the descriptor portion that you have seen. So we have seen the name of the variable, um, the um, data type of a variable, length of the variable. So we can make some impact or define this in the data set, data step. It contains an implicit loop, which means it will by default, it will execute at least once. Also, it contains an implicit output statement, programming or executed once for each. How do I begin the data step? This is the syntax, data SAS data set name. So data always begins with the data statement. A data statement can be up to, up to 32 characters long. So, so And then can be of letters, numbers, or underscores. And it start with a letter or an underscore. SAS statements all end with a semicolon. Let me show this. We, will, we can have a 
your understanding. So I am going to uh, now access an existing data set which is available um, with us. It is available in libraries to SAS help. We have an existing uh, data set here. It's called uh, SAS help dot class. So I'm, I'm giving a statement called set SAS help dot Name of the SAS dataset is test. If I prog print, exact the copy of SAS help. This using the existing. I'm going to create a new SAS data set. Let me take some basic um, ID is the name of a variable that I'm calling this character. Oops. To give a statement called counts, and I can just give directly the my uh, data, the uh, ID number. Yeah. And go on. This can keep going. The run statement. simple way to write complex questions can be a new uh, created a new uh, SAS data set test 2 here it's an actual data we have entered and we are just publishing or we're printing it the data manipulation let's say some uh, mathematical uh, Analysis there, and we have statistical analysis that could impact the values of the variables. Those uh, um, update or the refreshed values will be reflected in the uh, in the output window. Getting back to the slide, this is the syntax um, of uh, SAS data step. Now, prox, what is prox step? Brockstep, we have seen two examples to uh, see the data portion and the descriptor portion. Brockstep are used to process the data set. These are nothing but the pre written programs that analyze data in SAS data set to process, that is, to generate reports, graphs, edit data, or sort data, and produce statistics, tables, reports, charts, plots. SQL queries and to perform other analysis and operations on your data. Final function that the proc step can perform is a data output. Here are some classifications. There is a classification of report writing procedures, statistics, and utilities. These are some of the examples. Still, there are more procedures. And this is how it works actually. So you have the raw data. 
we and it could be an external file or in stream data so in stream data is nothing but data that we uh, entered or processing through cards so this is called the in stream data Internal files could be um, through CSV, text file, or XLS. Uh, it could be for file format, and we can um, read uh, the data, process it. And data set is going to process it. And there is one more source we are seeing. Um, it's a remote access, like some catalogs, FTP, CPIP socket, URL. This is a file transfer protocol. Um, IP, Internet Protocol, Uniform Resource Locator, all this could be a remote access. And then once data step, read up step is having the capability to read external or in-stream data even through remote access. And this creates a SAS data set as per our SAS program. And this SAS data set is processed further using the first step. This prog step is giving us the report. There is a SAS log as well. I will show you the SAS log. When we submit, this is how it uh, gives us a log. So the data set work, work is the library. Data set two is the name of the data set. Has three observations. There is three rows. Three variables, three columns. There's some of the system information. How much time it has taken to process this? This is how it looks like. The whole uh, uh, the process flow. What you are seeing um, here is the pro how processing the data and the proxy. There is an example program of covering the structure of this program. This contains any number of data proc steps. Uh, demo demos the data set name, then you have the statements, and implies the end of the data step. The proc print, that I call the demo, demos the data set name. Again, run, run implies the end of the procedure steps. This is uh, both the naming conventions of a SAS data um, set name, typical name. So limit data set names to eight characters for portability purposes. Variable names can be up to 32 characters in length. First character of the name must be a letter or an underscore. The characters may, be in, may include letters, numbers, or underscore. No other character of permitter. I can show you what this is. Empty data set. I'm not giving any statement until uh, if I execute. So if it, uh, We cannot open it, but because it is it's not having any. Um, the test three uh, is a name, SAS uh, data set naming convention. So what it is saying is, you can start either with an, with an underscore, with a letter. This is accepted. Three we have seen already it is working, and if I'm giving some number, I think that it's giving a warning that also the error. It's saying uh, it's the error two two three two two. It says it's called a syntax error, printing one of the following. 
name coded string and few words. So this symbol is not recognition will be for example a special character. Again giving the same. Uh, the first character of the name must be a letter or an underscore. So, there's numbers or underscore, no other characters are permitted. Blanks cannot appear in a, in a SAS name. But however, um, when you talk about um, writing SAS programs, um, it is very flexible. You can have line and alignment, however you want. However, it should meet its uh, syntax. There should be a semicolon at an end or a box or a data, data shape, it should end with that. Every SAS statement begins with the SAS keyword. Every SAS statement ends with the semicolon. Words in SAS statements are separated by blanks, characters, equal sign. SAS statements can begin in any column. Any number of SAS statements can appear on a SAS single line. A SAS statement can be continued from one line to the next as long as no word is split. Have this it will still work. As statements can be entered in lower case, upper case, or a mixture of two. As is not case and situ except in quoted strings. So anything that you um, give in a quoted string will be Another sample says we are assigning value to a target variable x1 and just we have again. All our keywords are highlighted in blue color as you. That is the end of this. Uh, how can we learn and practice so SAS sound demand for academics? of this for uh, getting the access and learning SAS. Um, I'll stop here, ma'am. I, I can take uh, any questions if I may. If there are any questions, uh, you can ask them. Can we use SAS for unstructured data, sir? Yes, yes, we can. So when you talk about data, we are today we are talking about structured and uh, unstructured. Um, so when you uh, talk about uh, the source data, we call that as a raw data. Whatever we get. Um, as a raw data, we have the uh, SAS as a capability to process it and um, make it up to a particular standard. That standard is something we should have a uh, defined standard with us. Yeah, can can process unstructured.
¿Qué Are there any more questions, participants? I think we can move on, sir. Um, I request all the participants to switch on their videos so that we can have a focus session. Please switch on your video for the photo session. So one aspect which I would like to add is um, seeing the trends of uh, data science and the data analytics, how that is going to contribute uh, to us part of uh, the academia, the education, research, and for students as careers. Um, so what is going on, especially with the life sciences industry in particular is, so India is going to be a destination for um, future discoveries. As COVID has witnessed that we have the capabilities and the infrastructure to discover drugs and supply to the rest of the world. And uh, 2030, we are see, seeing uh, India is going to be the uh, the pharmacy of the world. A lot of these innovation companies, and when you talk about companies, there are three companies, three types of companies. One is the innovation companies or the product companies. All the companies discover drugs we call as the product companies. Um, these product companies have started getting into India, at least the last few years, many have um, set up their um, operations here. There is a huge scope for um, larger workforce um, in uh, research, clinical research and uh, drug discovery. And there are a lot of uh, career opportunities um, in this industry. And this industry is going to be an um, yeah, industry that is going to be needed forever as far as it is going to take care of uh, the patient's uh, life and the quality of uh, um, uh, people, the health. So the in com coming to the job, um, I think uh, this is uh, one of the highly paid uh, um, industry in terms of the job opportunities. Um, there are different roles, different uh, opportunities um, for um, the um, data science or the AI or uh, the uh, life sciences students. So I would uh, request the student um, community to, to take advantage and uh, be aware that there is a great opportunity in front of you and uh, take an advantage of it. So any questions uh, with what we have seen so far? 
I think um, you were able to follow what I was um, through with the uh, different slides. Thank you, sir. I'm hoping there is no other questions. I'll move it out of place. Sure. I'm, here with, I'm here with full of gratitude as we conclude this enlightening session on SAS. It has been an exceptional learning experience, and I would like to extend my sincere thanks to everyone has contributed to the success of this program. First and foremost, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to our esteemed resource person, Mr. Nishant Nalan, sir, for gracing with his knowledge and expertise. Your insightful presentation and the engaging session have truly enlightened us all, leaving a lasting impression on our minds. I would also like to extend my heartfelt thanks to our head of the department, Mrs. T. Kalai Selvi, ma'am, and the dedicated staff who have worked tirelessly behind the scenes to organize and coordinate this event. Your hard work and attention to detail have ensured the smooth execution of this program, creating an atmosphere connected to learning and interaction. Without your efforts, the event would not have been possible. Furthermore, I would like to express my gratitude to the management of Ishwar Engineering College for the constant support and encouragement. Your unwavering commitment to fostering a culture of continuous learning and development has allowed us to host such enriching sessions, improving our borders to horizons and stay again in the ever evolving world of technology. Last but certainly not the least, I would acknowledge all the participants who have participated in this program. Your active involvement, curiosity, and enthusiasm have made this event truly special. Your eagerness to learn and engage in discussions have created more vibrant, a, a more vibrant atmosphere. Thank you all once again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I think we are on time. Thank you.